Hello everyone, welcome to the start of a new Let's Play series. That's right, you read the uh, you read the title of the video correctly. We're going to be playing... That's it, Space Quest Chapter 1, The Sarian Encounter. By the two guys from Andromeda, copyright 1987, Sierra Online, Incorporated version 2.2. So originally re released in 1986. Uh, it's designed by Mark Crow and Scott Murphy. Yes, I'm going to read the credits out. Game development system by Jeff Stevenson and Chris Iden. It uses the uh, AGI engine. Programmed by Scott Murphy, Saul Ackerman, Ken Williams. Graphics by Mark Crow. And what graphics they are, let me tell you. Okay, here's the story. Light years from Earth's solar system, the people of the galaxy Eonon have been struggling to maintain the precious balance of life, haven't we all? The sun of Eonon is slowly dying. The planets grow cold. Food is no longer plentiful. Life will soon become impossible to sustain. The scientific community of Xenon devised a plan to convert one of Eonon's lifeless planets into a new sun. Thank you for pausing for me to catch up with. The effort was centred around the development of a device called the Star Generator. The Star Generator would be capable of igniting an otherwise useless planet into a raging ball of flame. An expedition set out aboard the starship Arcada to successfully complete development and testing of the Star Generator. The Arcada is now returning triumphantly to Xenon with the fully operational Star Generator. That sounds good. It was, yeah, everything's on the up. What could go wrong? You serve as a member of the crew of the Arcada as a janitor. That's right, a janitor. And not a very good one. You would probably have been sacked and replaced were the Arcada not millions of kilometres. From Xenon. As we join our story, you have just completed one of your famous on-shift naps in one of the janitorial storage closets. And that, I believe, is uh, as much a backstory as we're going to get in this intro, but the, um, the title sequence and the, uh, the wonderful music will loop. So, I think I might just let that go for a second. We can, we can enjoy that music, can't we? Um, well, I give you a little bit of my history with the game. So I'm, I'm really excited to be playing this again because I um, I did play this back in probably the early 2000s is my, is my best guess. So the story goes that um, we took a family outing to the, uh, the main library in town and had a look through the things they had for sale. And among the things they had for sale were some withdrawn PC games. And amazingly, they had the entire Space Quest collection withdrawn for sale um, and the Quest for Glory anthology. Um, I think, and I believe, the way I remember it anyway, is that my um, my sister was the one who found them and, uh, and rather excitedly brought them over. So for that, I think the, the grand price of £1.50 for each set, we managed to get hold of a great deal of um, Sierra Adventure games. Um, the first adventure games I would ever play, um, and I yeah I was instantly smitten with them really. Uh, beginning with Space Quest One, which I think was the probably the first adventure game I ever played. So let's here we go. Let's get this cut that music out. Um, so this is this interesting feature. So the the series, if you're not familiar, it's um it's a, a very between a light-hearted and outrightly um, satirical. Uh, sort of space opera um, adventure game series, and the uh, the main character is called Roger Wilco, or comes to be called Roger Wilco. But in Space Quests One and Two, I believe, you get to enter your own a, a name of your choosing for the character. So why not? As we've got the chance, let's be cat sequences here. I think that looks good, and we'll kick things off. You are startled by the sound of an alarm. It is followed by an urgent voice which warns that the Arcada has been boarded by unknown intruders. It ends abruptly. Okay. Uh, cool. We've got free agency. Okay. I'm going to pause the game. There we go. Lovely. So uh, this is, uh, as you might imagine, uh, quite nostalgic for me. So I was definitely not within the uh, in the first generation of uh, of Sierra Adventure Game players, not first generation of Space Quest players, but 
it definitely holds a special place in my heart and I spent I seem to recall I spent many hours poring over uh, screens such as this trying to work out um, what might be an interactable uh, part of the screen and um, and indeed what words to use to describe them um, but I had a lot of fun doing it so hopefully we're, we're gonna have another another bout of fun in this voyage of rediscovery so let's have a little troll through the um, the menu options so about space quest space quest was designed and created by mark crow and scott murphy so as i mentioned before um let's have a look at the help screen there we go so there's you some key commands you can use i must remember to save i do hope i remember to save because um as um as sierra games are infamous for you can die in a variety of ways and um and, and you can die die um at great frequency so it is worth saving um we've got yeah a save here i mean should i kick things off with a save why not there we go brilliant well yes that's the that's the directory okay cool uh we'll call it um just had a nap there we go Right, so I suppose well, I need to run down, don't I? If you're not familiar with the um, the AGI games of um, of Sierra's early heyday, then we need to run down the um, the AGI engine a little bit, don't we? So uh, it's, I mean, for its time, it's it's pretty sophisticated. So this is 1986. This comes out, and it is um, possibly the fifth. AGI game that Sierra made. I know before um, before 1986 they'd made King's Quest 1 and King's Quest 2 using this um, and then in 1986 there's this game, there's King's Quest 3 and also The Black Cauldron which I think was their last um, game made using uh, a license to make Disney games which seems incredible for a company that um, also put out um, Soft Porn Adventure and would go on to um, make the Leisure Shoot Larry series, but hey, you know, it was a it was a wild time. Um, Leisure Software in the uh, in the early eighties. Um, so you've got you've got a menu that you can um, you can pop through here by you hit Escape to get to the menu, and you can scroll through what you need uh, there. Um, you can uh, increase the speed. That's the speed of everything that happens. Um, I think we we might go a bit fast so that. Uh, we can up the walk cycle a little bit and see how that goes. Uh, you've got two sound modes on and off. Uh, you can use a joystick. I um, I dread to think what would happen if I tried to use a joystick. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys and type in commands with the uh, the keyboard, as you might expect. And we can oh see objects. That's fun. So yeah, so there's a basic there's a basic inventory system where where you get a, a text list on this screen and then if you have an item you can get a description for it by by having a look at individual objects um, it's a long time since i've uh, played an agi game so i'm going to take a little while getting familiar with it um, but basically it's a text parser game uh, i've played several on this channel already um, so you can type in what you want to do and see if the parser recognizes what you mean um, it can. It, so I just said, look, corridor. It says this is one of the many hallways in the Alcada. Um, so I mean, it's a description. It'll do. Right. So we just came out of the closet. Um, and what if we go back in the closet? You've just stumbled into a small, dark, and very cluttered utility closet. Many things fall. Most of them landing on you. Doesn't say much for your cleaning prowess. Okay. Look, closet. Is it, you can't see anything in here because it's dark. Turn on light. That does not compute. Um, switch lights. Light. Switch lights. Lights on. Lights on. Say so what? Okay. Well, they're giving some vary in the, uh, variation in uh, the I don't understand what you're saying commands. And keeping it light-hearted, which is kind of the, the Space the space Quest series manages to do, as far as I remember. But yeah, we're going to go fast. You can type uh, a speed description into the uh, 
into the parser to get that going. So let's go through this door. I did mention the wonderful graphics, didn't I? The um, the AGI system uh, makes use of um, chunky pixels, which are kind of um, twice as wide as they are tall, which gives everything a really distinctive look. There's a distinctive look to the um, the fonts they use, and um, yeah, they have to be uh, judicious in how they use uh, the graphics. But they're they're really good for making um, like a clean space like um, environment. I think. Let's have a look at this room. This is the Alcada's data archive. Many volumes of information are stored on data cartridges. There's a computer console here. Um, okay, what if I look console? The console consists of a screen, keyboard, and cartridge slot atop it. Oh, atop it rests a Model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Okay. Um, can I use the console? Is that good? It's not currently one of your options. Okay. Um, can I use the keyboard? Oh, okay. I'm not quite sure what's happening there then. Uh, can I look at the cartridges? Looking at the wall, you see shelves full of data cartridges, which can only be removed by the retrieval unit. Can I use the retrieval unit? Oh, I have to remember how to type retrieval. Okay, um, not sure about that. We will, we will see. I'm pretty sure that's instrumental. I don't remember. I only have vague memories of what we're doing, and I know this opening section is tricky. That's a, an elevator down by the looks of it. Um, nice little bit of. I I do really like the. Uh, as much as it might have seemed like a. Um, a little bit of a jibe. I do really like the graphics of these AGI games. And I like um, it, it's kind of like looking at a miniature world, isn't it? And the fact that we can now see um, some probably dead bodies in the lower half of the screen. Um, so there's a bit of um, dramatic irony there for our our character wandering around up here. Um, that there's clearly some some devastation and death going on. It's really nice, and there's some like clear visual communication there that there's an up and down elevator, which I, I really appreciate. Um, the AGI uh, engine does make use of. Oh, there's a person here. Uh, look, person. It appears to be one of your crewmates. He is non-functional. Okay, a uh, search person. You search the body of your crewmate and find a key card. Oh, I think I probably have to get key card, don't I? You take the key card. Fantastic. Well, let's show off how we can look at things. We're pressing F4, was it? It was F4. Oh no, that didn't work. You know what? Hold on a second. We've got to do something. Right, now let's try F4. Hooray! Solved it. The key card is a flat rectangular piece of synthetic material which is magnetically keyed from passing check stations. Written in tiny letters are the words Beacon Hinder Security Systems. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, that feels like that's a little bit of a puzzle solved. So should we save? Seems like that's a good idea. Key card found. Um, yes, I was talking about the graphics, wasn't I, before we, um, we found this poor person. So, yeah, uh, it uses um, EGA graphics. Um, which limits, I believe, from my understanding, it limits. Let's go down. It limits the system to sixteen colours at a time, uh, which uh, we will we'll see all of them in short order. There are a few on screen already. Um, yeah, I guess we want to go up here, don't we? Probably. Don't look at don't like look at that blasted door the other way. Yeah. So I believe. In theory, if you if you program it that way, you can choose uh, between um, sixteen different colors each screen that you draw. Um, but I believe that all of the Sierra ones. I think there are probably very very few games that actually do this. Um, use the EJ palette and um, cycle through different areas of, of a larger palette. Uh, they use the the standard um, sixteen, which you'll see here. Now that you think you hear footsteps, that's not good. Uh, let's hide in this closet. Uh, same description of the closet. 
Okay, yeah, so that cycles round in a circle um, very quickly. That's fine. Okay, I'm hiding. Is this good? Listen, footsteps. This is true, you definitely hear footsteps. You'd better make yourself scarce. Okay. Is that... We got, oh, we got a score. One of 202. Um, so that's kind of a... A way of gauging whether you're making progress and also... Let's go back in the records room. A way of... Um... Oh, okay, something's happening. The door opens and a man you recognise as one of the lab scientists enters. He appears to be injured. Oh, indeed. Very, very dramatic. After only a few steps, he slumps to the floor. What I love about the um, the low resolution restrictions here is that you, you do have really have to go for it with the animations to um, to make your point, um, which is kind of the best, the best way to animate, really, is to um, embrace extremes. Um, uh, and that's that's kind of a way to to also get um, subtlety as well, ironically. Um, so look at the person. A large laser hole has been burned in his uniform, through which you can see previously unexposed tissue. Struggling painfully, he raises up on one elbow. Oh yeah. Oh, oh okay. He tells you the Arcada. I didn't even have to ask. He tells you the Arcada is under attack and that the star generator is in danger. You had better leave if you value your life. Oh, no worries. Uh, I'll try to. He looks over toward the shelves full of cartridges and utters the words, Astral body. He then settles to the floor, lifeless. Okay, now can we use the console? Has this been locked by... Okay. Uh, oper operate console? Under operate. Uh, look, console. Oh, that's not useful. Console. Console. Console is the screen, keyboard, and cartridge slot. Atop it rests a model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Um, use keyboard. No. Um, look, screen. Does that work? Oh! Here we go. Welcome to the Arcada Data Archive. Model DX Storage and Retrieval System. To select a cartridge, enter the title below. Press enter to quit. Title catalog available with top security clearance only. Ooh. What was the, oh no, heck, what was the thing we need to type in? Astral something. Oh. Oh no, I forgot. Curse my brain. Uh, excuse me, uh, what, what did you say? Oh, in his current condition, the man is not much of a conversationalist. You know what? I might just go back and uh, check the record here. Okay, well, it was Astral Body. Um, so, let's look at the screen again. That'll teach me not to write it down. Astral Body. So, I found retrieving. <gasps> Look! Watch it go! Okay, uh, get cartridge. Done. Uh, we can F4 this cartridge, I'm sure. This is a data storage cartridge. On it are the words, astral body formation, the untold story. Um, so, can we put the cartridge in the slot and get some info. Oh. It observes his handiwork briefly and leaves. Oh, as you lie on the floor in smouldering carbon gelatinous heap, you can't help but wonder why you bothered getting up this morning. Thank you for playing Space Quest. Too bad you failed miserably and doomed all your people to a horrible death at the hands of the Sarians. If you continue playing as skillfully as this, we'll never have a chance for a sequel. Better luck next time. Oh, okay. That was um, <laughs> that was quite morose. Um, they I usually um, expect uh, Space Quest death messages to be quite sarcastic, but I found that yeah, more just sort of disappointed, not angry, just disappointed. Right. So can we? Let's 
So if I look screen, is it uh, timed or is it um, based on how many interactions we have? Do we think? I'll get my. Okay, I'll admire the animation this time. I'll just get my ready um, put cartridge in slot. No, it's definitely as soon as you type put cartridge in slot, isn't it? Interesting. So probably just having the cartridge is enough. Let's try. Try and error. It's a, it's a big it's a big thing in Space Quest, I seem to remember. Okay, let's try that sequence one more time. Uh, so we'll look screen. We will astral body. So yeah, I think I think I did have to play the opening sequence in particular because it has a few different moving parts um, many times over to to get through it. Brilliant. All right, so let's go this way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just don't look at the. Don't read the cartridge. I mean, should I say save? Yeah. Why not? Um, got cartridge. So we're going to try and go down this elevator and look at these people. I love how just like the little details, like you're facing the other way when you come out of the elevator. A really nice little little touch. You'll search the body reveals nothing. Okay. Uh, there is a command somewhere here to repeat the repeat what you last typed, wasn't it? F three, brilliant. Uh, I guess I could have guessed it was an F function button. Uh, your search of the body reveals nothing. Cool. What's in this room? Whoa, it's the bridge. Amazing. Um F three. Oh, hang on, sorry I've missed the uh, Yes, off there. The obvious search is nothing. Oh, you kept me going. Oh, this is a be beautiful, beautiful image. Love it. I think, okay. A look, room. This is the Star Generated Development Laboratory. Due to incredibly low security clearance, you have never been allowed access to this room. I'm having to clean it. Um, uh, look. Star. I assume the star generator would have been in the center of the room and is now missing. Okay, look, computer. That does not seem to be in your sight now. Okay, I don't know if there's anything we can do here. It may just be a bit of color, which is possible. Look at the twinkly stars. Uh, look, screen. Oh. Warning, self-destruct mechanism has been armed. Evacuate ship immediately. This is not a test. Oh, okay, that's happening in, ooh, in a really fast time. Okay. Okay, well, that brings it home, doesn't it? Okay, let's go this way. Let's go here. Oh, hang on, did I need to, oh, did I need to get that body? I probably did, didn't I? Okay. Uh, F3. Oh, no, no, search body, search body. Oh, okay, I didn't need to. Okay. Um, we might do this one. I think we need to go this way. I uh, searched. Oh! Uh, nothing. Nothing in that laser riddled corpse. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, this is like some kind of power plant, doesn't it? Um, we, I would. Woo! Hold on. Oh, yeah, when you. That's a little gameplay point here. Um, when you're moving the character around, um, they just keep moving in one direct the direction you've pressed until you press that direction again to stop them, which takes a little bit of getting used to. You're in the central control area, the Arcada. The reactor domes pulsate irregularly, as if they had been tampered with. This is not a good. Through the window just above the control console, you can see down into the vehicle bay below. That would be a way out, wouldn't it? Let's... F3 this. No, no, sorry. Search body. I keep feeling I haven't uh, done that. You search damage body of your fellow crewman. You get too close a glimpse of the injury. In the pockets you find nothing. <laughs> I love the way um it, that it keeps 
uh, building things up. And, um, uh oh. Kaboom! Gosh, Cat Sequences, it would appear you have met an untimely demise. With the explosive destruction of the Arcada, you become part of a fresh collection of space debris. Sad. Thank you for playing Space Quest. <laughs> Uh, same uh, same death message as before. Oh, nice. I mean, you know what? I think this is going to be the thumbnail. <laughs> and so it should be. Um, all right. I think we might need to restart. Um, I think that's probably the way to go. Okay. We'll, we'll stay at normal speed, although the walking will be a little bit slow. Because I think that also speeds up the timer. So I think we need to go in and out of this room. I think we need to visit a second time for the the um, event to happen. So we'll go out of it and then we'll come back in. Can't see any struggling scientists. But there should be one this time. I hope. I'll get a look person ready. There we go. Yes, is the scientist. Okay, brilliant. Here's the person. Okay. Uh, I think he's going to talk, isn't he? Yeah. Astral body. Look screen. Astral body. Been get cartridge while we're waiting. There we go. Let's go. I'm motoring now. Okay, so we need the the only other body we need to look at is the one that's over here. I think this top um, this top section on the left, um, and then. Thanks. Ah, oh, proximity opening elevator doors are good, aren't they? Right. Um, get key card. Key card. Key card. Brilliant. So those were the only two things we needed to do there, weren't they? Let's go here. Uh, second attempt. Hang on, let's save that space there. Second attempt. If only I could type. Oh no. Uh, key card. Can't. Ridge, oh, just about fit, fitted that in. So we don't need to look at any bodies. We don't need to visit the um, the room with the star generator in, or that would have housed the star generator. We're just going to head this way. We don't need to look at any bodies. We just need to keep moving right, I believe. So this is all good, yeah. This is how your space quest. Slowly in and in almost complete silence. You know, I love um I, I love this graphic. Look at that, there's definitely a sense of perspective there. Although um you have to use a little bit of imagination to separate like foreground and, and background elements, I think. But it's it's all good. So did we search his body or not? I can't remember. Let's... Oh, it was only seconds ago. Um, let's have a look at it anyway, because we've definitely saved a lot of time. No, okay. So, look, panel. Oh, the keycard unit is a small, sturdy box with a slot. Just above it is a display light, which is not currently on. Okay, can I use the keycard? Uh, you slide the keycard into the slot, you hear an audible click, you take the keycard back. Does that mean we can go here? Fantastic. Alright, uh, bay doors are closed. Alright, look room. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen in this room, so let's see. This is the flight prep room of the Arcada. 
As you can see, there's a sign on the back wall as well as two closet doors and two buttons. Oh, okay. Um, well, let's push the button. Have to be more. Oh, okay. Uh, push the right button. Oh, um, look at suit. This is a standard issue flight suit designed to protect the wearer from the unique conditions of space travel. I think we might need that. Get suit. Oh, okay. Yep, we we'll just hang, hang up our journey to duds. Right. Um, push left button. Oh, uh, look, closet. There you go, we need a space in there. Closet. Looks like an electrical gadget of some sort. Okay, get gadget. Fab. Um, while I'm negotiating my way down here, let's have a look at the gadget. Written on the electronic gadget are the words dialect translator. On one end is a dial and a light currently dim. That seems like it might be interesting and useful in another situation. Right. I think we need to open these bay doors, probably, don't we? Uh, look at controls. The console is adorned with many status indicators. One button on the right is marked airlock. Uh, push airlock button. Oh, nice. Okay. I feel like we're solving this, but may are we solving this too easily? Maybe. Uh, let's save. Uh, Pre-airlock. Um, my... I I do like how there is a definite sense of urgency here um, that's been set up narratively through these two iterations of us playing. Um, it's definitely got me moving on. Oh, hello. Moving on through this sequence, um, which is actually quite nice and cinematic. Um, what's on this console? Looking at the console, you see a button marked platform. There are also some gauges which don't interest you. <laughs> um, press... Uh, platform button. For safety reasons, the platform will not function with the bay doors closed. Okay, open bay doors. Let's be the crit. Uh, was there something back in here? Bay doors. Uh, how do we open the bay doors? What makes it more tense is knowing there's a timer and that you can't see the timer. Console. Oh, there's only one airlock there. Um, look, bay doors. How do we open the bay doors, do we think? Look, room. Yeah, I feel like we've done this room. Um, I'll go back next door and have a look in that one to see if there's anything they didn't do a look room in there so we could ha check that out yep oh oh you, oh you need to oh you need to press it every time okay okay well this is you know what let's restore that's fine, pre airlock. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's saving us time, really. <gasps> it even um, saves that you were in motion, which is pretty, pretty groovy. Okay, look, room. This is the cavernous vehicle bay. Look, doors. Massive bay doors are tightly sealed. Look controls. Perform we'll out from here. So the um, I guess the the main difference, uh, thinking about it between um, 
Hmm. I don't know. I don't. What have we missed here? I'm not sure. We might need to do it from outside, won't we? Somewhere. Well, it makes me think the phone's ringing. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, about um, the advancement of um, of adventure games to something like this AGI engine is that you're using the um, when you're moving the character around, so it gives you kind of a sense of being in the world and having um, a, a specific agency, I suppose. But also, basically, you're just using it as a as a cursor to um, um, preempting. Things like, oh, on the oh, on the console by the window, two buttons marked, open bay door and close bay door. Press open bay door button. There we go. So, as I was saying, um, yeah. So, kind of, uh, the character I'm playing as in this in this reality consequences is kind of the cursor that I'm using, and I. They need to be in proximity to the thing I want to interact with. Oh, that's just open. Oh. You've adorned the door with a small circle of nose grease. Were you Carl Malden? It could have could have gotten ugly. That's amazing. I, I get that reference. Um, and I guess people in the 80s might still get that reference. But uh, I don't know if anybody today would. Look up Carl Malden. You slide the key card into its slot. You hear an audible click. You take the key card back. Oh, game. All these mechanisms. Okay, now I need to do the airlock thing. Warning. Uh oh. Bay doors are open. Ah, that's fine. I don't think I'll be. I won't be blown into space, will I? That wouldn't happen to Roger. Roger will go. Okay. Press. Airlock. All right. So we might need to do this again if we um if we don't escape before destruction times. But we had a good we had a good fast start, so that's that's something. Okay. Uh, press I believe inputs, things that I've typed here will stay between screens. I don't think that gets reset. No, there we go. Hey, there we go. It's a nice Star Wars y looking I guess Star Trek y looking. Um Cargo Bay, isn't it? There is now an escape pod here. Right, it's a there are some nice points at which the um, the avatar gets smaller when they get further into the distance. No, it's just a tiny pod. Um, go escape pod. You cannot perform that act from here. Um, okay, there's a door. There's a door open. It's a it's like a gull wing door. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, can I do it from here? Oh, look at this. Right. Um, look, cockpit. Oh, that's not appear to be he here to view. Look, room then? Okay, you're sitting in the pilot seat, the escape pod facing toward the window. There's a dark console before you and seatbelt straps at your side. Confused as to what you should do, you wish you would have paid more attention during crew orientation. Okay, um, put on seatbelt. Done. Um, look, console. Also consists of a screen, pod status indicators, a throttle, and some buttons. The buttons are marked auto nav, power, and don't touch. Press power button. Oh, look at that little hand. Uh, press auto nav button. Pull throttle. Throttle, that's a hard one. The, your door is ajar. Oh, God. Close the door. While we're seatbelted in. Alright, now pull the throttle. This is very simulationist. Uh, which I kind of respect, you know? Oh, the escape pod moves slowly out of the vehicle bay and into space. Wow, look at that. Look at those cosmic rays. Congratulations! You have narrowly escaped an explosive death. Don't start patting yourself on the back just yet, though. You are now travelling aimlessly through the cosmos. Brilliant. What a fantastic place to leave this episode. 
thank you very much for joining me. It's been it's been exciting to return to the world of Space Quest. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know your memories of Space Quest. If uh, don't let me know if I've already got something terribly wrong and it's going to uh, <laughs> it's going to hamper the rest of the game because I'd like to find that out myself. Um, but if you've got any um, memories or thoughts in general on Space Quest and Sierra that you'd like to like to share, please do leave a comment. You can subscribe to the channel to find out when the new next episode goes live. And um, and yeah, I'll see you around soon. Take care. Thank you.